Welcome back to our coverage from AWS reInvent. We're live from the show floor here at the Sands Expo in Las Vegas for our penultimate session of the day here on twitch.tv slash AWS. My name's Ian Massingham. I'm with the AWS Developer Evangelism team, and I'm joined by some more special guests. Gabe, who will be taking your questions from the stream, so if you have questions for our expert guests, please shoot them over to us uh, via Twitch, and we will ask those live on the stream. You got it. And of course, I have two guests that are going to talk about a brand new AWS service as well today. So uh, why don't you introduce yourselves first of all, gents, and then we'll get started with a few questions for you. Great. My name is Eli Khan. I'm a principal product manager for a new service called AWS Security Hub. And uh, I'm Ryan Hall, and I'm a principal technical specialist for AWS External Security Services which uh, includes the brand new uh, AWS Security Hub product. Awesome, which leads us to a really obvious first question. So can you uh, talk a little bit about what AWS Security is, uh, Security Hub is? And particularly, I'd like to ask you to focus on the, the problems or challenges that this helps uh, our customers address. So can you talk a little bit about the new service that you launched today? Sure, yeah. So, you know, we had a lot of customers who, in some cases, were getting hundreds or even thousands of alerts out of all of the different security tools that they were using. Some of them were other AWS security tools like uh, AWS Guard Duty or uh, Amazon Inspector, but then also a multitude of partner tools that they were using that, in many cases, they then had to go to lots of different consoles to view those. They also needed ways to help prioritize which one of these alerts from all these different tools should I take action on first? Right, which ones are the most important for, uh, from a security value standpoint? And, and also to allow them to apply and get more information around the compliance state of their accounts. And not just in, in one account, but across all of your accounts. So a lot of our customers have more than one AWS account. And they have tools and services running across all these different accounts that are also generating those alerts. And they wanted to be able to have uh, some compliance benchmarks that they can see in a single dashboard without having to go to nine different uh, websites. This idea of running multiple AWS accounts might be new to some of the viewers on the stream. So an AWS account is a container for resources, it's an aggregation point for billing, and it also has its own identity and access management namespace, so you can create uh, security roles essentially within that account that allows, customer, uh, allows those roles to do things with your resources. But can you explain a little bit about why customers might have multiple accounts? What are the reasons for that? Yeah, there are a number of reasons. And the number of accounts in a typical organization can range from one to a few thousand at some of our larger customers. Uh, it really depends on how a customer wants to use AWS. Sometimes they'll set up an account for each individual team that is using AWS. Sometimes they'll group them more broadly, so they'll run all of their testing and development in one account, and then they'll run all their production workloads in another account. Great, can you talk about uh, common scenarios or, or use cases where you see customers using the new Security Hub service then? Yeah, like I said, you know, one, of the, one of the key common use cases, again, is applying those security benchmarks and understanding, are you following best practices? So, uh, at, at the preview that we launched here, we have the CIS benchmarks uh, for AWS Foundations, which is a great set of about 42 different checks that we're doing that are looking for what are really kind of industry understood and accepted best practices for configuring a lot of different areas within your account. And again, being able to see that across your entire AWS estate. But then also uh, from the use case of consolidating the alerts from all of your third party security tools, as well as the other AWS security services that you're using into a single dashboard that allows you to then get summaries of what type of security events you're seeing right now that are live. Uh, but also be able to stack those and prioritize them so that way you can focus on, for example, that's the single EC2 instance that's causing the most security alerts, or the image, the AMI that created that particular instance, or which S3 buckets where maybe you've left them open to the public, things of that nature. You mentioned aggregating alerts from other, other AWS security services there, so which other AWS services are supported for event aggregation or alert aggregation here? Yeah, so we've integrated with uh, three of the major AWS security services. Those are Amazon Macy, Amazon Inspector, and Amazon Guard Duty. And then one of the things that I'm most proud of and excited about in terms of the launch that we had today is that we also integrated with 29 different products from other providers. So a number of the big security vendors like Palo Alto Networks, Symantec, McAfee, Qualys, Rapid7, et cetera, 
They're also all pushing their findings and alerts to Security Hub, and then we are doing that process to help prioritize those alerts so that analysts inside of a large security operations center can really figure out which are the ones they need to focus on and take action on. Great, can you talk a little bit about early feedback that you've got from customers that might have been using the service? I know that we've had a beta for this service before we announced it, we've had a few customers that we've been working with during that process. What kind of feedback have you got from customers that were on the private beta? Yeah, I think you know, some of the key feedback that, that we've got is they really, really appreciate the, having that CIS check across all those accounts. It really gives the, them, from a compliance uh, standpoint, a good understanding of, of making sure that they have uh, the kind of good best practices now down on all of their accounts. Uh, the other thing that, that they really seem to appreciate is one of the other nice features around uh, Security Hub is we have a common format. So one of the other challenges, because I'm just having a whole bunch of consoles if you have multiple tools, is all those tools generally produce outputs in different formats. And with Security Hub, we created a single Amazon finding format. So all of the partner tools, all 29 partner tools, all of the, the three uh, Amazon security services that we, we launched with, all send data to Security Hub in the same format. So it's already kind of normalized for you, and you can also retrieve that data out in that same format. So if you wanted to pull data out of Security Hub, you can pull data from 29 different partner products plus our three partner our products in the same exact format without having to build a different parser for every single different application. On that topic, just a question that I have. If I have a security tool that isn't speaking that common finding format yet, can I have Security Hub, can I teach it how to parse the format that I do have this tool of reporting in? No, you know, we really didn't want customers to have to be in the business of building parsers, right? It's, it's, yeah. Anyone who's trying to do that knows it's, it's, it's not fun. I agree. Uh, so, I mean, if you have a tool that's not represented there, I would say uh, to work with your account team or to talk to your app partner and uh, have them work with us to get uh, onboarded into Security Hub because we are, while we launched at 29, we're, we're certainly always looking to, to work with more of our good partners out there. That's great, I think yeah. if you can awesome. save customers of doing that work, that's wonderful. Eli, I think you've got a demo to show us of the service, so can we jump over onto the laptop and stream that, and maybe Eli can talk us through this quick demo. Yeah, so uh, this is the home page that a security analyst is typically seeing when they log into Security Hub, and this home page is really designed to highlight the most important pieces of information that they need to see on a daily basis to understand their security and compliance posture. Uh, you can think about this as essentially their to-do list. Uh, so as a security analyst, every day, I'm scrolling through these different dashboard widgets and looking for spikes, looking for interesting things that will help me focus my investigation process. Uh, you know, so as an example, if I start drilling down into one of these dashboard widgets, uh, I'll click on top EC2 instances. And what this is doing is it's looking across all those different security tools that I have in place in my environment, and then it's aggregating uh, which security tools are producing findings or alerts for which EC2 instances. I can quickly see which EC2 instances are most important or most problematic in this case. This top one here has 6,600 different alerts or findings associated with it, so I'm clearly going to want to dr drill down into this. Um, you can see here that there are also a bunch of filters. Uh, these are fully customizable, so when I drill down from that initial dashboard widget, it pre-populated these filters based on the definition of that dashboard widget, but if I wanted to refine this search, I could, I could add additional filters. Um, as an example, if I only wanted to see um, filters associated with a particular company, uh, let's say like Qualys, apply those, none there. <laughs> so I'm going to get rid of that one. So you know this Brings me back to that same view. And then I'm going to drill down here, and I'm going to see all of the underlying findings. So that's those 6,600 findings are now all populated here. I can begin triaging these, understanding uh, if these ones are truly a problem or if they're just a false positive. I clicked on that uh, title of that finding, it brings up uh, some additional information, including remediation recommendations. Uh, so I have some manual information here about how I might want to remediate that, but we can also automate that. So I can select this finding, and under Actions, I have a number of pre-populated automated remediation steps that I can take, or workbooks that, we, that you can take. Uh, and so, as an example, I may want to terminate the instance associated with this alert because it's problematic. I can take that action, 
it will send these findings off for processing, and ultimately that instance that is associated with that particular finding will be shut down. Now we've got a, we've got a question yeah. on, the, uh, on the stream chat about remediation. I noticed there that one of the destinations for that remediation action was SNS, which I think will probably answer this question, but it's a question about automated remediation with Lambda functions. Yeah. So presumably the right architectural approach for that is subscribe your Lambda functions to that SNS, send the findings to that SNS topic and have them processed. Is that what you would suggest? Uh, you, you can actually even do it even easier because we do support custom right. actions. So in the console, you can go to custom actions and take a CloudWatch event. So CloudWatch okay. yep. uh, events, for those that aren't familiar, is a, an event bus that accepts multiple different targets. And one of them actually is directly to a Lambda function. Okay. So if, if you have some action that you wanted to do that's, that's not in the pre-populated one, yep. uh, you just create a Lambda function that performs that action and then uh, add the CloudWatch event as a, a custom action in the console there. Great. So, uh, so uh, we've got another question from yeah, the stream please. that I think is relevant. Uh, this is from Tesserectal, says, can you set policies to automatically execute said action anytime the same finding is found in the future? Yeah, so usually that is done from the source provider. Uh, so example, uh, a lot of these findings might be coming from Guard Duty. Yep. Guard Duty is also pushing these findings to CloudWatch. And if you know that there are certain classes or types of findings that you'll always want to take a specific action on, you can just set that up so that runs in the background so that you would never actually see those findings here in this right. console. This console is really for what's left over and is designed to help an analyst prioritize everything that hasn't been remediated. Um, so we certainly recommend that you set up automated remediation for everything that you just know needs to be done without any human touch. And then you use this view for anything that needs that human review. Uh, actually, another related question from the stream is, uh, Scott Piper asks, uh, if a finding comes across from US West 2 and another from US East 1, will I see them in a single view? So, hi, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> we know each other. Uh, so, uh, it depends. Uh, so, we do not support cross-regional aggregation uh, within our system. But if you have a partner tool that does that cross-regional aggregation, if you're using an endpoint protection platform like CrowdStrike that's doing that cross-regional aggregation and then pushing those findings to us, then yes. Got it. Uh, but we're not doing it natively inside the service ourselves yet. Okay. That is a, a feature that uh, has been highly requested. Scott saw your tweet earlier on it. Uh, so that is something that we're planning to push out. Thank you, Scott. Great, anything else to show in the demo? Uh, maybe just real quick, if we have a, another minute or two. Uh, so Ryan was mentioning a lot about compliance checks. We also have some really interesting widgets here that summarize your compliance status. The first compliance module that we're rolling out is the CIS AWS Foundations benchmark. We have 43 fully automated and continuous compliance checks against the 48, 43 controls, uh, scored controls associated with this particular standards framework. And it's really the exact same workflow. Uh, I'll drill down and I'll see for a summary for each of those 43 different rules, uh, which ones are compliant and which ones are non-compliant. Uh, if there's a single failed or warning check uh, for any of these rules across any of the accounts that we're aggregating, the entire rule is then non-compliant. Uh, so I might want to drill down into one of these non-compliant rules. Once again, I'm seeing the underlying findings associated with that rule. And I can drill down in here and see some additional information and then once again decide if I want to take a remediation action or if I want to send this to a ticketing system, to Slack, to chat about it with a colleague, or to uh, an incident management platform like PagerDuty. Great, and you can see the multi-account structure there with those different account numbers popping up, right? Exactly. Great, so what do you have planned for this uh, service moving forward? Uh, what's coming next? So, uh, well, one of the ones is uh, the, the item that Scott mentioned earlier, so cross-regional data aggregation, finding ag aggregation is a really important one. Uh, so we have one compliance module in here today. We're planning to add a bunch more, so uh, both regulatory compliance modules like HIPAA for the healthcare industry, PCI for credit card information, uh, but we're also planning to add the ability for customers to write their own policy and compliance checks. Um, and we're also planning to author an AWS best practices one, which is really based on all the knowledge from our field and our solution architects and what we think are the most important compliance checks based on our AWS domain knowledge. 
Great. Uh, any more questions from the stream? Yeah, we've got one more uh, as a follow-up question to one I asked earlier. This is from Tesserecto also. Uh, can you view findings from multiple accounts in the same hub? For example, if they're grouped into the same organization. Yeah, yeah. so we do have the, as we saw on the screen there, we had multiple different AWS accounts that all those findings were coming together from. Yep. And that's done through what we call a master member. It's very similar if, if anyone out there is watching has used guard duty, it's a very similar process where you basically give the account number and then the root email address, yep. and we will uh, join all the member accounts to that master. This is actually really useful because you know, a lot of times you have a security team, you have a lot of different users across your organization that are using AWS services, yep. and they want a single place to collect all of those logs about all the activity that's going on uh, in those users' accounts, and so that's why we have that master member uh, capability. Sweet. It's not reliant on AWS organizations, so, so if you're not using organizations, you can still actually use that feature. That's helpful. Okay, great. So last question is, how do customers get started with the, day, with the service today? If customers are interested in trying this out, what should they do? It's super simple. Go to the, the, your console homepage and just type in Security Hub. And the activation process is literally just a couple of clicks. Um, so you'll land on a page like this. Yep. And literally you just need to click, uh, when you first activate it, this will say Enable Security Hub. Click on that and it will automatically enable Security Hub for the account that uh, you're currently using and uh, we'll start running the CIS compliance checks automatically. Um, so it's literally just a couple clicks. Great, excellent. So thanks for joining us for this last uh, new launch segment of the day. We're going to be back at the top of the hour at 1800 local time here in Las Vegas with a recap of all the launch news from AWS reInvent today. Thanks again, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. See you soon. See you guys. Thanks.